Hello everybody, welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Don. I'm Lana. Okay, we are gonna talk about rents. Mm -hmm. We are gonna talk about when will rents finally fall if they ever do, or when we will know that they fell. This is from an article that just came out. Um, it's why is rent still so high a year after experts told us it was going to fall. All right, now first, before we get started, had a lot of people come on the channel and say, but Todd, I'm reading or seeing videos that rents have already fallen and yada, 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 but they're actually not falling. Almost every single tracker of rent is up. Okay, so first of all, we are not suggesting that you are in any way disingenuous or misinformed. Rents, like home prices, are hyper-local. So if you are seeing rents fall in your neighborhood, you're probably right. They probably are falling in your neighborhood. But when we're looking at these numbers, these are national numbers. So they bake the whole thing, they, they stir it, they flip it upside down, and then they extrapolate something that they hope has meaning out of the whole thing. So, like I said, respectfully, we're sure you're right, but these are national numbers. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to break down the actual factors, and when we do, you are going to be shocked mm -hmm. to find out that the Consumer Price Index for Housing has zero input to home prices, meaning home prices are not a factor at all. Zero. Home prices could triple, and it doesn't affect the CPI. And we're going right. to talk about that specifically. Well, right, because the homes themselves don't. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. Okay, here's the first quote for the article. Over the past year, two-thirds of the core CPI increase has come from shelter. Greg McBride, chief financial uh, analyst at Bankrate, wrote, wrote recently, shelter remains the largest contributor, responsible for more than half of December's increase in the headline CPI, and more than two-thirds of the increase in core CPI over the past year, Juana, why is just this one thing, housing or rents, the largest factor? Like, why don't they count about every, all the other prices? So rents are the most important thing because it is the single lar largest expenditure. Okay. So that's the reason. Okay, so if eggs go up by 30% mm -hmm. and rents go up by 2%, the two percent in rent is more actual dollars than eggs going up to you know five bucks a for a dozen instead of three or something, right? Not only that, but that Im the eggs impact everyone. Rents do not impact everyone. Okay, all right. Here's a chart. This is the CPI chart. This is now surprise. Okay, all this data is coming from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They're the ones that gather all the data. Um, this is the most recent, uh, one of the more recent ones where they pull where they got CPI, you can see food and beverages, costs, consumption, you have the uh, housing. Remember, it just is housing. It doesn't say specifically rent or home prices. We're gonna talk about that. Transportation, medical care, all these other things. So it's a huge amount. What was very interesting too, this is also from Bureau of Labor Statistics. Okay, this is the 12 month, this is what your government, the BLS who's measuring CPI is saying. This was the 12-month change in rent prices in of a primary residence in selected areas, December 2023. So this was the last year, basically. This is February 24, but this was December 22 to December 23. Mm -hmm. So the highest percentage increase you can see down there at the bottom, that's, that line is 10% where this basically touches it. Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach. And then you have Hawaii was up there, San Diego, Riverside, goes down the list. You know, Baltimore, Seattle, Tampa, they're kind of in the, in the middle. Now remember, these are just select cities. If you don't see a city, it's not because it was like below this. That US city average is about six and a half percent. So the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics said in 2023, that rents went up, uh, or cost of housing went up six and a half percent. Okay, all right, now, uh, I thought that was pretty fun. Okay, Juana. Um, now, this is what's interesting. Or I'm going to let Juana talk about this after I read it. This is directly from the Bureau of Labor Statistics website. Mm -hmm. It says, measuring price change in the CPI. Rent and rental equivalents. Juana, I don't see the word home purchases in here. They're not considered. Okay, I'll read the article and then we can talk about this. 
Now, the, the highlighted part is the most important thing, but here I'll start from the top. Owned housing units themselves are not priced in the CPI housing survey like most other nation's economic statistics program. The CPI program views owned housing units as capital or investment goods distinct from the shelter service they provide and therefore not as consumption goods. Spending to purchase and improve houses and other housing units is treated as an investment and not consumption of the CPI. So home prices go up 30%, not included in the CPI, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you can read the rest below that. Why does, I mean, does that, if you're trying to measure the increase of goods and services, why don't they include that? <laughs> because they make the rules. <laughs> okay. What so, do they do? How do they do this? Well, I mean, what? Do, how does this work then if they're not counting price and home price appreciation? <laughs> Well, for, for most of us, it's it's like, it's very frustrating when, when, when this is the way they're calculating. Because obviously, if we're making a mortgage payment or even if we're paying cash for a property, we would like the that expense to somehow be um, reflected in the CPI. And it's not. Uh, the part that is reflected is things like usually when you, when you buy a new home, whether it's brand new construction or, or resale, there's a lot of other economic activity that goes along with it, such as maybe purchasing new appliances, maybe redoing floors. So then, you know, your your whole um, new best friend is Home Depot and Lowe's. Yep. And so so you're spending money that way. So there so the the CPI in some ways reflects it in kind of in a roundabout way through through those goods and services, but it does not reflect it directly. But the problem with that, Juana, is if you go buy a brand new house and let's say you paid Thirty thousand more than somebody paid for the same house six months previously, but you go to Home Depot and you know their uh, appliance prices have fallen. Mm -hmm. Now that when they grab the appliance because appliances you know are included in the CPI, it, it appears that price like that's a negative impact to the CPI. It, it sort of so that portion yes, but then remember that they're also tracking. Uh, the, the number of units because that's an indication of, of growth in the economy and, and a future demand and that sort of thing. So it is more complicated than that. But on a kind of a simple level, they're not considering uh, home purchases. They're only considering rents. And part of the reason why they're not considering home purchases is because, of course, home purchases, uh, not, they're not all financed. Some are cash, some are, some are finance. Home purchases also, uh, they're considered an investment. So, which is very frustrating for, for a lot of us because, for example, okay, fine, I own a home and let's say I'm putting on a new roof. That's not considered in the CPI and that's not considered, I don't get to deduct that investment as though if I was doing it for a rental property. So there are all kinds of things in there that um, frustrate a lot of us. What do they do to people who buy houses? How do they calculate in, how do they, do they, is that at all, is there any way they try to capture data out of that? So, I mean, yes, they do capture data as far as home purchases because we, um, you know, we certainly all reflect that on our income tax, whether you're purchasing an investment or a home. When you file your income tax, even if you pay cash for the property, you still have costs that you can then deduct from, from your income on your income tax. So, so that is reflected sort of, but it's not reflected in the CPI. What about this owner's equivalent rent and the questionnaire that the government basically sends out or collects. Oh, my Lord. Okay, so that one's that one's a head scratcher. So they, they do this survey where they say, okay, Mr. Homeowner, I understand that you own your home, but if you were to rent out your home, how much do you think you could get for it? So they kind of use that as, as a way to calculate too, which I think, again, is very inaccurate. So, well, yeah, because I mean, the average person has no, honestly has no clue. Like well, almost every single person who's ever said, hey, I'm thinking of moving and renting out the house. They all, the first thing to say is, what do you think I can get for it? Right. They honestly don't really have a clue. I'm going to read this quote. So that, part, of, part of the reason they don't have a clue is because I think it's, it's a harder number to track. Um, and as opposed to home sales, which those are easier to track. And I think that just has to do with the way the various websites um, deal with that because they're trying to sell uh, real estate agents, um, prospects or leads, and obviously uh, those leads are more valuable for home buyers and home sellers than they are for tenants. So that's why those websites don't um, 
don't do such a great job of being transparent regarding rental values. Okay, here's a quote from the article. Uh, the BLS, which is the Bureau of Labor Statistics, they're the ones that grab all the data for the CPI, mm -hmm. calls this owner's equivalent rent or the amount of rent that a homeowner would be paid if they were renting out their house and gathers this data via questionnaire. So there's no industry professionals involved in this. I guess in theory, you could call and say, hey, I've got this questionnaire. I can tell you in the 20 plus years that I've been a real estate broker, I have had zero people. Remember, we've sold 3,000 houses. We know a lot of sellers have ever called and said, I own a, I just, the house I just bought or whatever, I got this questionnaire. So basically it's not, it, everyone doesn't get it. Very few people get it. And they use this data as far as calculating CPI. Right. So the other thing that um, we get this survey um, from both the federal government and from um, the National Association of Realtors as brokers, we get the survey once a month and they ask us questions sort of in line with that. Do we think prices are getting better? Do we think prices are getting softer? That sort of thing. But that doesn't equate to a number. That equates more to a sentiment. Yeah. Uh, and so I'll read this and Wanda, you can explain it to them. Okay. Private listing services like Rent.com or Zillow, surprised they did not men mention Zumper. Zumper actually has the most robust rental data. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Zumper has more uh, apartment data than they do single family homes. Sure. But but I'm saying that it's all they do. Yes. Okay. Uh, Rent.com certainly has a lot of apartments on it. Uh, monitor the listing prices of housing and track their changes in real time. Mm -hmm. Okay. The CPI data, however, has a serious lag, Sturdivant said. It can take anywhere from 6 to 18 months for real world conditions to be reflected in the CPI. Why is this? Why is it taking 6 to 18 months for people to notice changes in rents? Right. So remember, not everybody's lease comes up at the same time. So when you're leasing, you your rent doesn't get increased throughout the throughout your rental period. It only increases usually at renewal. So because of that, it takes a long time for that to show up. So if you're renting a house today and it's twenty five hundred a month, and then your lease is up for renewal, let's say in August, um, and then you get the survey, let's say in June, your rent hasn't gone up. Your rent doesn't go up until August. So you renew in August, you, your first new rent is in September, and then your new um, survey doesn't come out until the beginning of next year. So it takes a while, so that's why. So let's, let's give this example to them. You're a tenant and you get a survey and they say, hey, we're the government, we just wanna know how much you make in a rental payment. Now, your lease is up in December, let's say. Mm -hmm. It's up in eight months, okay? And then you go, oh, it's $2,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And then they come back in, uh, October, six months later, because that member, they only check every six months, mm -hmm. they, right? And then you, it's the same. Mm -hmm. So there's no change. And then it changes, but then they don't know, right? Mm -hmm. Other scenario, Juana, they ask you what your rent is and you say it, it's 2000 but then you get a rent increase. It's now 2100 mm -hmm. And then six months later, they ask you what your rent increases and now it's 2100 mm -hmm. So now your rent has gone up over six months, a hundred bucks. So now they either have to infer that it's a year lease and you just, that was your one year thing, or maybe you're, you know, you could be on six month lease. It could be going up that much every month. Mm -hmm. So it's highly inaccurate data that is used in this thing, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the problems we've had is that while a lot of people, so Zumper's index is actually way more volatile because mm -hmm. some of these cities that said home price, uh, that rents were up, for the CPI, Zillow's saying they're not. Zillow's saying there were rent declines in some of them. Another problem is this, Juana, you're in a market where the median rent is, we'll just say 2,000, it's a nice round number. And rents actually don't go down at all. The, pri the rental price of everyone renews for the exact same price, okay? So would you expect the median rental price to stay exactly the same? Sure. Okay, let's say at the same time they build say 5,000 new apartment compl you know, buildings, units, mm -hmm. okay? Five, and, and that they range from 1,000 to 1,800 each. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, nobody's rent goes up, they throw all these, because people are maybe moving into the city, right? They throw in all these apartment places in, and because of the way it works is because there's more at the bottom, the median now drops down to somebody paying 1,900. 
mm-hmm. a month. So it would appear in that market, rents are falling. Statistically, when you look, you say, oh my gosh, rents are falling. But then people go, wait a minute, my rent didn't go down. I just read that rents are falling. You call your landlord. I go, the rents are going down. Why, why isn't my rent going down? <laughs> I mean, this is actually, this is, this is a highly um, not precise science, right? It's like more of an art form trying to figure out what, what the heck is going on with rents. Because what we get is this anecdotal data. Right. I mean, I think that they're hiding behind big numbers. Okay. Um, because they're, you know, these are... Um, these surveys probably encompass quite a few people and because they're across the country and that sort of thing, I think that they're hiding behind this big data and that's what they're using in order to justify the accuracy of it. Um, I question whether that's truly accurate because let's say, for example, that they're surveying uh, New York, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Houston, and San Francisco. That's great, but that's not reflective of most of America. Right. Um, so I think that's, that's an issue. Right. So the bottom line is that you're, we're not going to really know. I mean, your rent can go up, your rent can go down. We had, we had an air in Vegas where they said rents were down 0.8% year over year with the only kind of top 50 markets, I think in the U S largest 50 markets that had a rent decline. This was some point last year. Um, but yet none of the rentals that we dealt with. Almost everyone had a price increase, right? Everyone has a price increase. Everyone got a price increase. So why you're saying, well, if rent prices are going down, then why was that? And you know, maybe it was the you know ten thousand apartments that got built added to the bottom of the thing. So it appears the median drop, median didn't drop. It just the the mix of places you know you could rent in theory dropped. It's not like people are going to go, oh. My, I don't like paying $2,000 a month for a house. I'm going to go move into this apartment over here because now you're moving into a one bedroom and you don't have a yard. You, don't, you maybe have a carport instead of a garage. They're like completely different things, but they're all counted as rent. So this whole thing is sort of a mess. Don't you agree? It is a mess. It's like and, I'm not trying to help you again. And remember, the CPI <laughs> is what the Fed is using to set monetary policy, which is causing interest rates to be really high mm-hmm. and frustrating people about... Um, you know, but I, I question how much weight they give to that, because remember, yes, they're using this, the Fed uses the CPI to set monetary policy, but I, I question whether they give every category in the CPI the same weight, and I would, I would think not, because I think these people are rather intelligent and understand how this, how this data is gathered and the accuracy of it. Uh, the CPI. Um... Over the last year, the core CPI from the Fed, Mm -hmm. two-thirds of the increase was housing, meaning they weighted housing two-thirds of the amount. Okay. So they're they're obviously using the information. They are. Because if if you take that out, then we have 2% inflation. Mm -hmm. It's the largest um, factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There we go. There we go. All right. Or government helping. Yep, that's it. So, um, love and kisses to our government. Uh, please remember to uh, leave us your real estate related notes. We appreciate it. Like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the video, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.